Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. Today's video is a requested video and this person wanted to know how to do a tool swap with proximity prompts. So that's what we're going to be doing. So I have a couple different tools around the map here. One of those tools is a key. So as you approach the key, you're going to see this little prompt here. You can press E to pick it up. And then we can go over to one of our other tools over here. So if I already have a tool in my hand and I try to pick up this wrench here, it's going to swap it out. So now instead of the key, I have the wrench. And our final item is the hammer. So if I try to pick up the hammer, then like before, it's going to swap it out. So it's going to place the old tool down and pick up the new one. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the setup, and then we can start working on the scripting. So the first thing we're going to do is add a folder into the workspace where we're going to store all the different tools. So go ahead and click on the plus sign next to workspace and then add a folder. We're going to rename that folder to swap items. So right click, press rename, and then we're going to type in swap items. After you have your folder, you can go ahead and insert the tools that you're going to be using. I went ahead and got these from the workspace, but if you're going to be making your own, that's fine too. If you are getting these from the workspace, just make sure you check the scripts. I'm just using them as models, so I actually deleted all the scripts inside of it, so there's nothing left inside. And it's just a model that you can pick up. If you're going to be doing something like a piggy game where you just need to be able to pick up the items, but they don't actually do anything, then that would be the best option is just to remove all the scripts from it. If you want to leave the scripts, that's fine. I would just be careful with anything from the toolbox that you check it out and make sure there's nothing wrong with the scripts. Inside the tools, we're going to be changing the part that should be named handle to main. So go ahead and do that for each of your tools. Find the part that says handle and change it to main. Inside the part that we're renaming to main, go ahead and add your proximity prompt. So you can click on the part, click on the plus sign, and then just search for proximity prompt. And it should come up right here. Also for that part, we're going to want to make sure it's anchored. And then for the tool, you may want to unselect can be dropped. That way they can't drop the tool. After you get your tools in this folder and make all the changes, we can go ahead and start with the scripting now. So we're going to be adding a script inside this folder. You can do that by just clicking on the plus sign and then adding a script. The first thing we're going to do for this script is add a variable for the folder. So we'll say local folder, and that's going to be equal to script dot parent. After that, we're going to be using a for loop to go through each item in the folder and add a trigger for the proximity prompt. To do that, we'll say for underscore comma, and then we're going to say obj. That's just going to stand for object in pairs. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put folder colon get children. Outside the parentheses, we're going to put the word do and then press enter. First, we're going to check to make sure our object is a tool. So we also have a script inside this folder, so we don't want to do anything with that script. We only want to work on the tools. So we'll say if obj colon is a, and then we're going to put parentheses, and inside the parentheses, we're going to put tool. If it is a tool, then what we're going to do is we're going to say obj dot main. So that's why it's important to rename it to main because we're referencing that part. Inside that part, we should have our proximity prompt. After that, we're going to say triggered. So that happens after the player presses the required key. And thinking about that now, we actually didn't set that for the proximity prompt. So let me go ahead and show you how to do that. So let's go ahead and start with the hammer, which is over here. So if I take a look at the proximity prompt for the hammer, there's a few properties that you probably want to change. For the action text, I chose swap. For the object text, I chose hammer. For my key, I chose E. And then for the hold duration, I chose zero. If you want to have them hold the key for some period of time, then you'd put the value here. So if I did something like one, then the player would have to hold the E key for one second to trigger the prompt. The other part that you're going to want to change is the UI offset. So this is going to control how far up or down the label appears. So I chose a value of 100. That seemed to work pretty well for me. But depending on your situation, you might want to make that number bigger or smaller. If you choose smaller, it's going to be lower. If you choose a higher number, it's going to be higher off the object. Let's go and run the game now, just so we can check out the look of our prompts. Okay, so if we go up to our first tool, which is right over here, we see our prompt is up here. It shows the object name, which is key. That's what I set for the prompt. And the action text is swap. For this one, the object name is wrench. The action text is swap, just like we had before. And the hammer shows the same. So that UI offset property is what makes it appear above the object here. By default, it was kind of in the middle of the object. So that's why I thought I needed to raise it a little bit. All right, so let's go ahead and continue with the scripting. We left off with proximity prompt dot triggered. So after that, we're going to say colon connect. 
and then we're going to put function. Inside the parentheses next to function, we're going to get player. So that's going to be the player that triggered the proximity prompt. Inside this function, I'm going to start by saying local tool is going to be equal to. We're going to be using a function to find the tool. I named that function check tool. And then I'm going to give that function the player. You'll see it's underlined because we haven't actually defined that function yet. But let's go ahead and do that now. For this function, I'm going to say local function. The name of it is check tool. It's going to get the player. Inside here, I'm going to say local tool is equal to player dot character colon find first child. And since we don't care which tool they have, we're just checking for a tool. We're going to use which is a. And then inside here, we're going to use tool. So this version here checks for an object type. The other one, find first child, will look for an object's name. That line of code is checking the player's character to see if they're holding the tool. The other option would be that it's in the player's backpack, so we got to check for that too. So what we're going to say is if not tool, so we're not able to find it in the player's hand, then what we're going to do is check in the backpack. So we'll say tool is equal to plr player dot backpack. And then we're going to use the same thing. So I'll just copy and paste. And that one is going to check in the player's backpack to see if the tool is there. After those two checks, we're going to return the tool. So this value right here is either going to be nil if it didn't find it in either locations, or if it was able to find it in one of those locations, then it's going to return the tool object. So what that's going to do once we run this function is going to store that tool object inside the variable. And then what we're going to do next is say if tool, so we're able to find it in one of those locations, then we're going to be creating two more functions. One is going to be put down. And for that function, we're going to give it the object and the tool. In this case, object is the one that's on the ground and tool is the one that the player has. Okay, so after we put down that tool, we're going to pick up the new one. So that's another function we're going to use pick up. For this one, we need to give it the player and also the object. Okay, so the other case would mean that we're not able to find the tool, which means the player has no tools currently. So in that case, we're going to say else. And we don't need to put anything down because we don't have anything, so we're just going to use the pickup function. And we're going to give it the player and the object. Okay, so now we just need to define those two different functions. Let's go and start with the put down function. We're going to say local function put down. This one is taking the object and the tool. For this function, we're going to say tool dot handle dot proximity prompt dot enabled is equal to true. So some of this is going to make more sense once we have the other function. So I'm going to wait to explain everything until we have both of them. After that, we're going to say tool dot parent, and that's going to be equal to folder. So we're going to put that tool back in the folder. Then we're going to say tool dot handle dot anchored, and that's going to be equal to true. After that, we're going to say tool dot handle dot position. And that's going to be equal to object. So that's the object on the ground dot main dot position. We're going to look for a touch interest inside of the tool. Um, the reason we want to do this is once we place down the object, we don't want the player to be able to walk into the object and pick it up again. So we're going to say if tool dot handle colon find first child. Here we're looking for an object called touch interest. Then so if we find one, then we're just going to say tool dot handle dot touch interest colon and destroy. All right, and the final thing we want to do once we put this tool down is change the handles name back to main. So we'll say tool dot handle dot name is equal to main. All right, so let's go ahead and work on the pickup function. So we'll say local pickup. This time we're going to be giving it the player and the object. And I forgot the word function. So for this function, we're going to say obj dot proximity prompt dot enabled. Once we pick it up, we don't want to see the prompt anymore. So we're going to set this to false. Then we're going to say object dot main dot anchored is equal to true. Then we're going to say object dot main 
dot name is equal to handle. And finally, we're going to say object dot parent is equal to player dot character. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at these two different functions. When the player first joins into the game, they're not going to have a tool. So when it runs this check here, it's not going to find a tool in the player's hand or their backpack. So all we need to do is pick up the new item. That's going to run this function right here. The first thing it's doing is disabling the proximity prompt so we don't see it while we're walking around with the tool. It's going to change the anchored property, and this should be false. So once we pick it up, we don't want to be anchored anymore. After that, it's going to change the main, which is what we currently have, to handle. That's going to allow us to pick up the tool. And we're going to change where the tool is located from the swap items folder to the player's character. Once they have a tool in their hand, then this right here is going to be true. So it's going to find it either in the player's hand or their backpack. So the first thing we need to do in that case is put down the current tool. To do that, we're going to run this function. This function is going to take the proximity prompt. And it would be helpful if I actually write prompt. So it's going to take the proximity prompt and enable it so that it's visible again. It's going to take the tool and put it back in the folder. It's going to anchor the item so it just stays there and doesn't fall over. It's going to set the position of the tool that we have in our hand equal to the object on the ground. Here we're checking for a touch interest and we're deleting it if it's there. And then finally we're changing the tool's handle, which was set down here, back to main. All right, so let's go and run the code. I might have a couple other spelling mistakes, so let's go ahead and check to see if we have anything wrong. Let's go ahead and open up the output so I can check for those. All right, so I'm in the game. Currently, I don't have a tool. Once I trigger this prompt, it's going to check for the tool. Since I don't have one, it's just going to run the pickup function. Yep, there we go. So let's go and check this out. So this should be which is a. Okay, we're going to restart. Okay, so let's give that another shot. Okay, so the proximity prompt is not inside the tool, it's inside the main part. There we go, so everything seems good so far. Let's go over to this one right over here and see if the swap works. So now since I have a tool in my hand, it's going to run the put down function and also the pick up function. And there we go, so everything looks like it's working good. So as you can see, I had quite a few different mistakes in that script, but it really isn't a big deal to fix as long as you're using the output right here. So if you haven't used this before, it's under the View tab. Just click on Output. And you can see anytime there was a mistake in the code, we got that red line. You're able to click on that red line, and it shows you exactly in the script what line is causing that mistake. And you can just take a look and see what you did. A lot of times, this is going to be a small mistake. You might have missed a capital. You might have missed a period or something silly like that. So just go ahead and fix that, and then you're good to go. So I was able to fix those two or three different mistakes that I had in the code really quickly and got it working. All right, so I think this is going to be it for this video. If you want to see anything else related to this, let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.